Okay, so the next adjustment that I need to make is going to be to the plane change. So I'm going to click var until I get to plane change. And there are one of two directions I can go with the plane change. I can add plus or minus. So let's add some plus and just see what happens. As I'm adding the plus, I can see I'm getting a lot of velocity here. And my eventual goal is to have this blue line completely wrapped around the gray line. So in other words, I want the orbit of the ISS to be completely wrapped around the Earth. And as I'm adding plane change, I'm adding a lot of velocity here, and I'm not getting what I want. I mean, at this point, I've added, you know, almost 2,000 worth of velocity, and it's just not getting there, so I'm going the wrong direction. So I'm going to reset, and I'm going to try the other direction. And I can see here, with just a few mouse clicks, I'm already, you know, completely, I have the orbit of the ISS from this vantage point completely wrapped around the Earth. So that's that's much better. That's what I want. And this is going to be more plane change that I need. So let me just back that down a little bit. Oops, wrong direction. Uh, let's start there. And let me go back to prograde. Because I can see that my the dashed yellow line that was previously intercepting the orbital altitude of the ISS is now it's now gone. It's it's now out here somewhere. So now I need to bring down the dashed yellow line so that it's intercepting the orbital altitude of the ISS. So let me add in oops, let me make this a little more sensitive. Go a little more. As I'm bringing this down, I can also see that uh, I'm further refining the orbit around the Earth. You can see it's, you know, looking a little better. So I'm actually going to switch back over to plane change at this point and eliminate a little bit more of that plane change because I just I just don't need that much. And so that's uh, go to a medium setting. I'm still wrapped around there. Let me get rid of a little more. You can see I'm still wrapped around. And let's go back to uh, plane change now, or rather prograde and see if we can get a little more. There we can see our yellow line now <clears throat> coming back down. So let me bring it to the point that it's kind of touching the blue there. And let's kind of go back and forth between plane change and the prograde until we just kind of get what we want here. I want the least amount of plane change that's necessary So I'm getting, oops, I'm going the wrong way with it again. And that has the yellow line crashing into the earth, but let me go back over to prograde here. Push that out a little bit. Go back to plane change, see if we can get rid of some more plane change. Okay, go back over to prograde. I'm just kind of going back and forth trying to find the best solution here. Looks like I could still use a little more plane change after all. And I think that's looking pretty good. That has the 
blue line completely wrapped around the Earth has my hypothetical orbit pretty much touching the orbit of the ISS and I have a fairly I have the least amount of plane change I can get away with so I'm gonna go with that now I'm gonna shift my attention over to this MFD this version this uh, state of transex which has not been altered yet so this is what this MFD looks like in this state having not made any changes to it and we're going to use this one to set up our plan for actually getting back to Earth so the first thing I need to do click through the variables until I get to graph projection and I'm going to change ecliptic to plan and then I'm going to click the VW to get to the escape plan. And the PE distance currently is at 2.086. And what this is, is the height of our orbit around the moon. And if you're not familiar with these particular measurements, this measurement is from the radius from the center of the moon outward. So we can bring up orbit MFD and this information is also here. The surface of the moon is 1.738 from the center uh, from the center of the moon outward. <clears throat> so the difference between this number and this number tells us what our orbit height is going to be. And if you bring up a calculator and just punch in 2.086 minus 1.738, that'll tell you how many kilometers you're going to be. And it's too high. We simply don't need to be that far up. If we add 30 to this number, that would give us 1.768, which would be about 30 kilometers and 30 kilometers around the moon is sufficient. So that's what we're going to go with. And this number here also comes from orbit MFD if you look at it here. You can see the radius if you do these if you don't have it set on this mode if you have it set on this mode then you can't see it but if you have it here then you can see the radius from the center of the moon out to the surface is 1.738. Bring transex back up over there. So here we're going to bring down the PE distance to 1.768 or thereabout. So I'm just going to click minus a few times. Change the adjustment. Change the adjustment one more time. And there we go, we have it 1.768. So our target orbital height around the moon is basically 30 kilometers. So the next thing I need to do, if I click the variable, the VAR, I get to the eject orientation. And by the way, if you get to this point in this circle, is a big white blob then you have a broken version of transex I actually had that problem at one point so you need to download a download the correct version of transex if you go to the orbiter forum website you can read about this particular problem so the eject orientation is one of two directions We could either bring the line this way or we could swing it this way. This green line here is our orbital path around the moon. And currently we're sitting on the moon, therefore we do not have an orbit, but that's what that line is. If I click the plus plus, 
I can bring the eject point, or rather my my heading. This is going to be what heading I want to uh, leave the you know to to take off from, basically. I can bring it this way and line it straight up over top of my current position. That gives me a heading of 60.01 degrees. So in other words, I would hover up off the moon, rotate to 60 degrees and take off in that direction, and then this is where I would eject. I could go that way, or if for some reason I wanted to, I can click on the plus plus, hold it, and keep holding it, and eventually you'll see the whole thing will flip around 180 degrees. Here it comes in a second. There it's getting ready to flip. And there's the flip. And I can line up that line on this side. And this gives me a heading of 240 degrees. And I can go this way also. I can hover up off the moon, rotate to basically almost straight west, a little bit, I guess that's a little southwest, and then take off and get to the ejection point and go home that way. If I do that, I'm going to have a shorter orbital, I'm going to have less time until I get to the ejection point before I have to go. And if I can get everything done that needs to be done in that amount of time, then this is fine. I can go that way. And because there's no atmosphere on the moon, it really doesn't make any difference which direction I go. But I would rather have a little more time on my hands, so I'm going to go ahead and go the other direction. I'm going to go out with a heading of about 60 degrees. So I'm going to keep clicking plus here until that swings around the other direction. And I'm going to plan my exit that way. Okay, so here it comes. I've just about got that lined up. And there it is. About 60 degrees. So there's nothing else to wait for at this point. So I'm going to go ahead and go. Turn on the APU. Going to have the hover doors open. Open my retro doors. Need to turn off external cooling. Using onboard O2. This is just for the XR2. If you're not using the XR2, then you don't need to go through as many of these procedures. Open the radiator. And for now, I'm going to go ahead and open up orbit on this side, orbit MFD. Because it'll be a little easier to help me with my, uh, with actually getting into orbit. And I'm not going to go through the details of getting into orbit around the moon, it's really simple. Assuming you know the basics of orbital mechanics. So bear with me a moment while I concentrate on getting up off the moon. I'll go ahead and use some of these autopilots just to make my life a little easier. Wheels up. Gear up. Rotation. Gear up and locked. And notice when I get up off the surface, the second that I engage the engines, my heading is gone. Down here, it doesn't tell me what heading it is anymore. It changes to relative inclination. So it's important to remember what heading you had, or else you'll be in a little bit of trouble. You won't know which direction to go. But I know it was 60 degrees. 